Board Gosh Energy Ambassador Grote Hegarty was at the launch of Board Gosh Energy's The Gift of the Gab at Croke Park in Dublin yesterday. The Gift of the Gab is a first-of-its-kind talent show that will search Ireland to find the best amateur pundits and give them a platform to showcase their talents. People of all ages from all parts of the country are encouraged to take part. If you would like to find out more or you know someone who is hurling mad and has the gift of the gab, contact bge at giftofthegab.ie. 2022 marks the sixth year of Borkosh Energy sponsorship of the GA Hurling All-Ireland Senior Championships. And I'm delighted to say Grod Hegarty is with us this morning. Grod, good morning to you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me on, lads. Um, this is a, a talent show. Is, the, is that something that you guys get sucked into as fundraisers ever? Like a dancing on ice, dancing with the stars, uh, stars in their eyes type thing? Is there Are there any hidden talents among your teammates? Uh, oh, I'd say if, if behind the curtain, no, but inside the dressing room and stuff, if there was a, a fly in the wall documentary, you'd see things that you wouldn't think that you wouldn't believe. But uh, I know, look, the, the the gift of the gab this year is is a is a really interesting concept. You know, I thought the uh, the gaga box last year was very, it was uh, it was just you know it's a bit of fun and it's, it's really it's really nice to watch. I love watching back the episodes and it was interesting that the the stars of the show were actually from Limerick to do me. So. Um, Look, I know plenty of herders on the dish down here that, that that think they know it all in terms of GA punditry. So it'll be interesting to see where the top pundits come from this year. You know, so it'll be a bit of fun anyway, and look forward to seeing it, uh, what, what happens over the next few weeks. Are you telling us that there are some like secret rappers, secret singers? Who's the best? Who's the best crooner in the Limerick team at the moment? <laughs> oh God, um, I'd say I'd say honestly, you no, know, Pat Ryan when he when he decides to hang up the boots I'd say there's a show there's 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 a job out there uh in, in comedy for him or something along those lines I don't know I don't know what you could say about him but he's he, he's an entertainer that's all I'd say um I'm I'm always interested right because we, we we've been listening to uh Paddy Andrews on the podcast now for the last couple of years talking about the dubs and, and how they kept the show on the road and just how self-motivated as a group they were and likewise with Tommy Walsh over the last couple of years we've kind of got to know what the ins of that the inside of that dressing room was like a little bit for you guys you know I'm reading you in the papers today and you're talking about the the download criticism didn't didn't kind of breach your inner sanctum in any way in any meaningful way and I'm always interested in that because everywhere you go people will be telling you what people have said about you um but and 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 likewise you'll be like look it, it makes no difference Tommy Walsh and uh, Paddy Andrews would say exactly the same thing that nothing actually mattered nothing seemed to penetrate how do you do that? How, how do you get to a point where something happens in the Sunday game, friends WhatsApp it to you, and it doesn't matter? How do you actually get to the point where stuff like this, you are impenetrable or impervious to it? I suppose it is a good question, but um, I suppose when we're, when we're together, like when we go to train and like we, we, it's funny, we never actually talk about hurling, you know, outside of training, you know, when we go, anytime we, we go away together, whether it be, you know, holidays in the off season or going to games or anything like that. Like nobody ever talks about hurling on the bus or nobody ever talks about hurling when we're away. You know, we, we're just, we're a group of friends that, you know, we've been, we've been through a lot over the last number of years and, you know, you know, there's going to be criticism coming from, from outside the camp, but we, we don't really, you know, as I said, we don't really, uh, we don't really care, I suppose, or we don't really hold, um, you know, you don't really, you don't really mind what people say outside the camp. All you want to do is you want to make sure that your teammates and and the, the management, I suppose, are uh, happy with your with your commitment and your how you're training, I suppose. And that's all, and that's all that does matter. Because you know, at the end of the day, there is going to be plenty of naysayers out there. And if you were to listen to them, you know, you probably will get nowhere. So uh, you just gotta you gotta listen to those that you trust the most. And where does the motivation come from? Because the other thing that. Um keeps getting spoken about particularly in GA terms and it always feels a little bit lazy to me is hunger the team with the most hunger is going to win and it's not really true it's the team with the best preparation the best tactical outlook the best skill on the day the best calmness under pressure none of this is actually like a completely intangible thing it's like have you put the work in uh, and do you have the players to deliver the plan when it comes down to the last few minutes of ultimate pressure generally hunger is actually something that's going to make you make a bad decision because you're you're trying too hard. Yeah, well, the motivation definitely doesn't come from outside. Like as I said, we don't we don't listen to you know whether it be good or or bad praise that we get or, or good or good praise or bad publicity. We don't like we don't necessarily we never discuss anything that happens outside our camp. You know, we the motivation comes from within. I suppose we trust. I've, I've I've often said it. We trust. You know that we have some serious guys over us, and um, 
you know, if we're trusting in Paul Canucks training and the other and the other selectors there in, in terms of they'll have us prepared as best we can. And and that's all you can do. You know, you, you can't worry about what other people are thinking about you. You just have to focus on your own preparation, make sure that you're uh, prepared as best you can and, and see what happens. And so where does your motivation come from? My motivation comes from, my, it's always been the same. It's never changed. Just getting the most out of myself. You know, it's, uh, just trusting in myself and, you know, asking myself, I suppose, I always kind of ask myself the question before championship, have I trained as hard as I can? Have I prepared as best I can? And if you can honestly tick those boxes and say, yes, you can, well then, you know, you're as, you're as best prepared as you can and whatever happens then after it happens, you know, in terms of, I often say, you know, it's sometimes hard to go <clears throat> look for look for advice or look for help and, and admit that you have weak areas in whatever whatever area it may be and go on to wh- whether it be the sports psychologist or going to the trainer or going to one of the, the management or, or the stats man and, and looking for advice or looking for ways to improve. Um, I always feel is, is a very uh, beneficial thing to do, you know, in the lead up to the championship and, and throughout the championship and try just in, be the best you can be, you know, just improve on your weaknesses and keep keep your strengths as strong as they can be. And as I said, see what happens after that. Once you can once you can honestly say it to yourself, look in the mirror and say, I'm as best prepared as I can, well, then you can't have any excuses. When you look back over the success over the last couple of years, were there pivotal moments in the season where you could pinpoint that things are going well or things are going badly and something needs to change? Or is it actually not really, that's not really how life works. When you're in a moment, all you can do is take that moment and try and uh, stretch it, and make it as elastic as possible so that uh, if it's a good moment, that's great. And if it's a bad moment, you, you move past it. I guess what I'm, what I'm asking is, is there a pattern that you can discern in retrospect in the years that were successful and in even some of the build-up years where you were less successful? Um, I suppose that's a, a fairly deep question, but um, like there's always going to be there's always going to be positive moments and negative moments, even within a game. You know, even within our even within our our best games that we played over the last number of years, you know, we'd always analyze every game and we'd look back in games, and you're never going to have a perfect seventy minutes or whatever. You know, there's always going to be plenty of areas to improve on it, and and like that's all you can do. You know, just as I said, try improve your weaknesses and and keep your strengths as as good as possible. But like. I was even talking yesterday uh, at the launch for the gift of the gab that uh, a couple of a couple of reporters asked me about the league this year it hasn't been super and things like that. But like, you know, the league has taught us so much this year because we have had a kind of a, a, an up and down league. You know what I mean? We have had had we've had probably more yeah so called negatives than positives in the league this year. But like the amount of learnings we've taken from the league this year have been incredible. You know, we might have learned more from this year's league than we have from any league in the last number of years or maybe any championship in the last number of years, you know, so you you can look at everything. I always say you can look at everything positively or negatively, you know, you know, when anything happens, you can, you can look on the bright side, you can look on the, on, on the negative side. And as I said, we've had a, an up and down league and, you know, people, people were kind of, I suppose, losing their head a small bit outside the camp, not necessarily inside the camp, outside the camp, they were, you know, saying this and that about us. But um, as I said, we've taken a lot of learnings from it and hopefully we can put those learnings into into the into use over the next couple of weeks and months. Was it that different from last year's league? Like there was a it it felt from the outside again, we have no clue what's going on, but it felt like you were a bit narky as a group last year in the league, that there was definitely there was a scrappy league and all that scrapping disappeared from the championship matches. I'm not saying that the there was a it, I don't I think again, I think we always classify this as intensity, but actually um it was almost like you put your intensity into the hurling specifically in the championship last year. But there was a scrap there was definitely like you were getting caught into fights um, as as a group last year in the league, and it felt like this year wasn't that much different. Yeah, I agree. I, I, would, I, would, I would agree with you that last year's league was actually similar enough to this year's league. It was very up and down, and you know, with a couple of issues, we've a couple of injuries and things like that. But uh, I suppose the narkiness I always feel comes from because you're not at the level you need to be at in terms of fitness, in terms of mental freshness, in ter- well, in terms of mental. Uh, being in the right state of mind and things for the game, you know, because when we similar to last year, when we came back this year, um, I suppose we kind of came back late. We only came back first week in January, so we didn't have a lot of work done going into the league. And then you're you're coming up, honestly, you're just coming up against teams that are fitter than you at the time. And I suppose the narkiness and the you know the I suppose you you kind of get you kind of get a bit of annoyed about how the game is going because you're not I suppose you're not moving as well as you normally would be, you know. Um, and teams are just they're fitter than you and they're they're faster than you at the time and 
that's where the that's where the annoyance comes from, I suppose. But once they, once you get the championship, everyone is prepared as best you can. So it's it's a level playing field by the time you get the championship. So it's periodization that like you you know you you weren't as fit and as ready to go a month ago, two months ago, three months ago as you will be in two weeks next week, the month after. That's like it, you know you have to plan the season out with the intention of peaking at specific moments. Yeah, that's it. You know, simple as we as I said, we didn't go back to the, or we didn't go back to the first week of January, and that's. And that's just a fact. And uh, some teams might have been back a month before. Some teams might have been back two months before. And they were way further down the line by the time the league comes around. But as the season goes on, uh, like as I said, the, the playing field becomes much more level. And as the season comes on, you know, maybe that little bit of freshness might might benefit us in the long run. You know, time will tell us. And on an individual level, how do you stop yourself from getting narky again? I suppose you learn from your mistakes. You know, unfortunately, I had a. Uh, I've seen the Galway game this year. I got sent off and. Uh, that's you know it's a it's kind of a moment that you know puts you back in your puts you back in your box a little bit. Of, you know you got to learn from those moments. It's a it's a horrible thing to happen. Um, you know getting sent off and leaving your teammates down and having to go home after the game, look at your family, and you know you just feel you just feel awkward and it's just it's a horrible feeling. So like anything, like like any mistake, like any negative moments in your life, you got to learn from them, and make sure that they don't happen again. You know, so um, hopefully I've done that. Is there somebody you speak to? to just work it out and kind of go this is what happened this is how it happened if I'm going to be in the same scenario again I'll know how to avoid it or is that something you just have to work on yourself like is there because I often wonder like you, you talked about um, you didn't use the word humility but it was definitely a humility to ask for help it's not a very Irish male characteristic and we definitely mm-hmm. need to have those conversations about all sorts of aspects of life but like it's good to ask for help when something goes wrong it's not actually a sign of weakness it's a sign of strength mm. Yeah, I did. I sat down with I sat down with Caroline, uh, our sports psychologist, who I would have been sitting down with anyway. But I suppose we just had an extra topic to, to talk about when we did sit down. I suppose um, a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, as I said, like you know, when you have top class people there to to help you, to to give you advice, to look after you, you know, to to help you be the best person you can be, you'd be stupid not to uh, I suppose not to dip into those resources that you have. So. Yeah, like we, as everyone knows, like Carolyn Curd is one of the top sports psychologists in Ireland. We're fortunate enough to have her. So, as I said, you'd be you'd be ridiculous not to be using her in, in those instances. To, you know, just to improve on things like, you know, little mistakes that you make and and things like that. There was one other thing that um, you talked about in the papers about how, uh, again, it was a humility. I thought where you were saying, look, we shouldn't yet be um, talked about in the same uh, realm as that Great Kilkenny team because they all have seven, eight, uh, nine and uh, more All-Irelands in, in some instances. Um, but your team your team has achieved uh, a level at the moment where people are legitimately having those conversations. And I know, I know you're, you're not having them as a group, but like at some point when you do look back, there will have been a, an age profile of this team right now and an opportunity for this team right now to go and, and be spoken about forever in those terms. Is, is any of that a motivation? I know it was for the Dubs at, at one stage they were like actually you know we're not just going to be a good team this year we could be an all time great team and if everybody you know if everybody lives the life they're supposed to lead if everybody stays committed if everybody keeps doing if the management team stay committed is history of interest? Um, again like as I said we, w- we wouldn't discuss those things as a group but you know like realistically and honestly if you ask anyone do they want to be a part of something special of course they want to say yes you know ask every single inter-county player about hurling and football ladies football camogie right now what's their goal for the year you know they're going to want to win the All-Ireland it's as simple as that everybody everybody wants to win as much as they can so um, look I leave uh, we, we, we don't as I said we don't talk about that but we leave that discussion to other people we just want to win. We just want to win as much as we can, you know. We just want to keep racking up those. We want to keep racking up as many medals as you can, you know. I'm a big soccer fan. I was watching the, the Liverpool and City game there um, on Monday, and you know there was a discussion before the game about Roy Keane was talking about how Liverpool, if they want to be a great team, they haven't won enough trophies. You know, they want they need to win a couple more trophies. So every team, regardless of whether every te- any team, whether they want to be a great team or not, wants to win. Wants to win as much as they can. So. Um, that hasn't changed on the Nimerick. You, you mentioned hunger a while ago, and I would agree with you to what you were talking about about hunger. You know, so um, 
yeah, like that's 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 just the plain and simple answer. Of course, we want to win as much as we can, you know, and see where that leaves us in time and let other people talk about whatever they want to talk about. Well, I think the discussion on hunger does a disservice to all of the teams who ever were beaten, like that Mayo team uh, in football. They're very hungry. The Waterford team that were beaten by Kilkenny in the Ireland final, they were starving. Your dad's Limerick team were absolutely starving as well after a famine. And, and the notion that, like, uh, they weren't hungry enough to get over the line, it's, it's kind of bollocks. Mm. It doesn't come down to hunger. It doesn't come down to hunger. As you said a while ago, it comes down to, you know, it comes down to loads of things, but I wouldn't necessarily hunger as a thing. You know, I, I look at all the great teams that have won over and over and over again. You know, were they as hungry as somebody else? I don't know, maybe not. But, you know, it comes down to decision-making, skill, you know, um, loads of things. I don't not necessarily, I don't, as, as I said, I would agree with you in terms of hunger. I'm not necessarily sure is that the most important thing leading into, the, leading into a big game or leading into a year. I guess the other thing is... Um keeping the motivation high would be the sense that you're improving and you've talked about the desire to improve as an individual do you feel like you're becoming a better hurler because like you're still potentially a good bit away from your peak in terms of like you you know the level of conditioning you have but the experience that you have and uh, the wisdom that you have there's still a couple of years I would say before if if your career goes the same way that everybody else's does that like you could be 29 30 before you reach your absolute peak do you feel like you're still improving I do, without a doubt. Like I, I always kind of laugh at this, that not so long ago, like you weren't in your peak until you re- kind of reached 30, 31, you know. So it's funny how it, the, the, the mindset has kind of shifted in the GA over the last number of years in terms of where people's peaks are actually at. But I suppose everyone is different. Like I didn't have, I didn't, like what some of the young lads on our panel are doing at the moment is, is, is mad. I wouldn't have been able to do that. Like I wasn't good enough to play for them until I was 22, 23. And, you know, we do have young lads on the panel now coming in as young as 18 that are pushing for, you know, a spot on the panel, a spot on the team. You know, they're coming in with strength and conditioning that is just off the charts. And as I said, I was absolutely miles off it when I was there. So I, I don't necessarily think I have a lot of mileage on the clock at a young age. So um, I would definitely say I'm, I'm still improving. As you said, my conditioning has is is always improving you know your your mental toughness your mental your the mental aspect of the game that i've bought into massively over the last couple of years and um as i said that's only starting to pay off again over the last couple of years and you know even strength and conditioning side of things that's all gradual improvement so i would say definitely i've never been in a better position than in the championship yet the other thing is that it's a very unified setup that you're in that the whole county has Rode in behind, you know, 10, 12 years ago now, big decisions were made and your your generation is benefiting from it. But we see the knock-on impact in football as well. And it feels like everybody's feeding off the success. It's not like this is an island where a bunch of players have come through together and you've got to try and get everything that happens when those players are together because it's not ever going to happen again. And I'm not saying you take it for granted, but certainly it feels like the structures are there to help you guys be your very best. Yeah. I've said it a million times before, like we are, you know, we are a group of players that that strive to be the best we can be. And obviously we do have a lot of talent, but we're extremely lucky to have the the guys over us that are, that are over us, you know, um, like I, I was actually, I was asked a very interesting question yesterday by um, one of the lads in the media for the launch. And he was talking about the new rule for the under twenties that they can't play senior if, or they can't play under twenties if they play senior. And I was talking about how when we were when we were under twenty one in twenty fifteen, John Kylie was our manager, and like if Keen Lynch was on the senior panel at the time and he had played senior that year, if he wasn't able to play with us that year, we probably wouldn't have won the under twenty one All Ireland. We probably wouldn't even won the first round. We only beat Tipperary by a point or two, if I remember correctly. And Keen was obviously integral to that team at the time. And it's interesting that I'd say seventy five percent of that team are now on our intercounty team and, and some of the some a lot of them are starting. John is obviously the manager. You know, if we are beaten by tipping that first game if Keane can't play, it's interesting to see where where Limerick Hurling is now. You know what I mean? It, it's it's kind of a crossroads. It's it's very you know, which I was just saying that the, the under twenty rule, I, I really don't agree with it that if you're good enough to play into a uh, senior when you're under twenty, they're punishing you for not playing your own age group, you know. So um yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, I suppose, for those lads. But it's just interesting that at a, a little moment in time, 2015, how, how Limerick Ireland could have been changed a lot if that rule was in place at the time. You obviously have a very deep relationship with, with John Kiley and with Paul Kinnerk. Is it a two-way street? Are you free to go and say, look, I think we need to do this or I, I, I feel like this is something that we're not doing as well? How much, how much do they listen to what you guys are saying to them and what's the feedback loop like? 
oh, they listen to Slav. Like again, I suppose for for them, why wouldn't they? You know, like you, they do have 35, 36 lads in front of them that um, are striving to be the best they can be. You know, obviously 35, 36 of the best starters in our county in front of them every night at training. And as I said, like we would analyze games uh, after we'd analyze a game at the weekend on the Tuesday night after training. And you know, you'd obviously look for areas of improvement, and we would have an open discussion as to, you know, the positives and negatives associated with that game or in the lead up to a game. You know, again, we'd have analysis sessions of whatever whatever team is that we're coming up against. And again, as you said, the feedback loop is quite open. We are completely trusted to uh, give our opinion, whether that be an analysis before uh, post game or pre game. You know, and uh, obviously they'd listen to us and you know things like that. So it's our 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 opinion is valued definitely and. In, in that kind of thing it's definitely the most open Munster Championship that we've had in a long time in that everybody f- will feel like on their day they're going to be able to cause trouble for their opponents uh, do you feel that too is this is this as um, as edgy as you might have been in the build up to a Munster Championship I, I, I always think the Munster Championship is extremely open you know the Munster Championship is they talk about the Ulster Football Championship as being uh, one of the best championships that there is, um, provincial championships. I would say the Munster, Munster Hurling Championship is definitely up there with it. Every single team in in Munster, whether it be Clare, Waterford, Tip, ourselves, uh, or Cork, are going to be thinking they're going to win the Munster this year. That is going to be the aim for every single county. And if it isn't, um, you know, there's no point even saying if it isn't because it is. Every single county is going to want to win the Munster in in Munster this year. So it is extremely open. It's, it's always extremely open. Nothing has changed. And again. This year, going back to the, the format, the group stage format where everybody has to play each other, uh, you know, there's no excuses. If there's no such thing as having an off day this year, you know, everybody has to play everybody. So if you're in, if you're in the fourth and fifth positions, um, I suppose you just weren't good enough this year, you know, and the top two will play each other in the final and see who wins and obviously third will go out into a qualifier or whatever it is. So, yeah, it's a very exciting couple of weeks coming up without a doubt for players and, and, and fans. Oh yeah, it's, it's brutal and it's great for us as, as neutrals. Uh, I can only imagine the ex- level, excitement level of actually being involved in it. Grode, always great to talk to you. Thanks a million. Cheers, lads. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's Grode Hegarty there, uh, Borgosh Energy Ambassador, who was at the launch of the Borgosh Energy Gift of the Gab at Croke Park in Dublin. And uh, for details of that, you can contact BGE at Gift of the Gab, G A A B dot I E. And um, it is the sixth year of Borgosh Energy sponsorship of the GA Hurling All Ireland Senior Championship. Uh, if you